such a sunny day. I know most day everyone here, but some people are new faces and um, and uh, and welcome to the new space of Kaya, uh, as I'm also the founder of Kaya. So always vision us getting our own building in a specific spot, uh, which is really exciting. Um, what I just wanted to add to what Ginger was saying is that this it, and what Ginger did clearly articulate is it really results. Uh, this all comes down to um, good governance. And so when Dave and I had run, um, all we had said is that we want good governance. And, and what UNN is made up of, of geographical zones. There's nine zones, and each of those zones have elections, and they elect a zone director. And that makes up our board of directors, and then the vice president and president. We're ex officio, so we don't vote. Um, but we chair meetings, Dave chairs meetings, and sets meetings, and, and so forth. And what's happened is that the majority of the board haven't had their zone elections in years, in some cases, decades. Um, and so in our constitution, it says that after two years, you, you um, retire as a director, um, and an AGM has to be held in your zone, your, and, and you can run again. And so ever since Dave and I got in, and prior to even getting in, we ran on saying that we want good governance. So we've seen that in the province, the urban voice wasn't being recognized politically. Leadership Council is definitely being recognized. The Métis is definitely being recognized. But UNN was not being recognized. And it was very clear. And that was my motivation for running, because I've always been an advocate, like through Kaya and through all the work that I've ever done. And I've just seen um, the opportunity there to, to make that voice stronger by running. And so when we got in, that's all Dave and I have asked for ever since we got in, is to have your elections. And so we kept on getting excuses of why these elections were happening. And one of them was resources. We need money to rent a hall, to have food and advertising. OK, so we agreed to that. And we gave them all who, were, um, who needed to have their elections $1,000 each, which is enough money to rent a place and get some food. And, and the only one that has taken place that was advertised was Zone 7. And Bernie uh, Williams Poitras was the last Zone 7 in the um, ginger land, and uh, Ginger got in. And <laughs> Bernie supported that movement. Um, so that's been our frustration, because we can't go out and advocate on behalf of urban and non-status people with a governance system that uh, is not working. And so that's been the biggest issue. And that's, for me, that's the number one issue that has to be solved before we can carry out any of the work of UNN. Um, but we have carried out some of the work, and mainly it's been around the downtown east side on the murder of women, pushing for public inquiry around the Frank Paul case, and around youth governance, because I used to work in UNN as a youth governance coordinator, and around homelessness issues. Um, and still to date, they haven't had their elections. And so what's happened is, I don't accept them revoking our membership. I, I am the elected vice president by membership. The only way I can be removed is by membership. So I don't accept that decision at all. And, um, and what's happened is they're making decisions on behalf of society, and mainly to do with finances. And this is where it gets really frustrating because they're spending, I think we're at around 40,000 right now, spent on Myron Barr, who's our lawyer. And it correlates with our deficit. We have about a $40,000 deficit right now. And that money is keep on going. So they met today, they're in Vancouver today, and their lawyer was there all day. We've had teleconference meetings with lawyers on the call. It's a thousand dollars going money into this lawyer to fight each other as opposed to going into the murder of the same way, or as opposed to going into the homeless situation, or opposed to some of the things that we're working hard on uh, on behalf of our uh, Aboriginal people. So that's the number one issue for me and Dave. Um, we bend over backwards, I feel. We, we, as soon as we got in, we didn't get paid for seven weeks. And we're, we're paid employees of the organization. And we accepted a reduced salary because we knew we were getting a deficit. Um, our first pay worked out to about $12 an hour for the first seven weeks of our term. And then every month we went month to month uh, getting paid, and it was really stressful for our families. And so a couple of months ago we said we can't do this anymore. Either pay us to the end of the fiscal or just give our records employment. We'll still do the work, but we need to know so we can sustain our families. Um, and so 
they went on and they had a meeting without us where they rescinded our pay and decided to pay us a dollar a year without us even on the, on the meeting. And uh, so we haven't been paid for going on almost two months now. And it's really affected our families. Um, and uh, it's really unfortunate. And for us, it's not the money per se, it's the governance piece. Because once the governance gets fixed, we can get the money that the society needs. I'm confident that if you just look at their demographics and, and the issues that are out there, that warrants what needs to happen. The other piece that we've really been working on and saying is around our membership. That we need to verify our membership. Because if you're a member, you know you've got a member and you have a lifetime membership. And so what has happened is some members have deceased or, or have moved or are not members anymore, but they're still in our database. Our database right now says we have just over 11,000 people. And that's one of the things that we want to correct for the society, is to show who we represent, to prove it. Because when we meet with government, they always question us on that. And so that's one of the things that we acknowledge. We say, yes, our membership system does not work effectively right now, and we want to fix that. So, so those are some of the key things that I wanted to say. Um, and I just really wanted to thank some of my mentors and some of my supporters and, and people like Ginger who stepped up to a leadership role, and as well as Dave, because I think you and Ed's, I mean, we and Dave were kind of reminiscing, it's been about a decade of this governance problem that plagued this organization. And I remember back when I was younger, as a young activist, we were really supported by you and 